Just saw someone post about this new Bumble ad. I love how we're just skipping to the fucking point. Ladies, people of America, what you're doing is working and it's being noticed. You are a product being sold. And that is why I say it's either celibacy and not dealing with men at all, or it's dealing with people who can tangibly enrich your life. You have value in a sexual and dating marketplace. And a lot of people are going to hear me say that and think that I'm equating um, you assigning women value in a sexual and dating marketplace to them being a transactional thing or being a product to be sold. But at the end of the day, that's the way it is. So opt out. I'm all for everyone opting out, but if you must participate, make sure that you are getting more from that situation, more from dating than just promises, lies, and dick, okay? I tagged the person who posted the original photo series below. You are valuable. Like it or not, when you start opting out, the whole world is going to fall the fuck apart. Don't ever, ever, ever forget that. But just to reiterate, I think celibacy is the answer. Where we're at now, with the rights being rolled back, with everything, celibacy is the answer. You can always tell time and capitalism by advertisements. Look at what's being sold to you. So Bumble has all of these new billboards condemning women for taking a break from the dating game. Here's one, you know full well a vow of celibacy is not the answer. Same words, different ads. They're telling you, oh, we know the dating game is rigged, but you still have to play. Can somebody just explain to me why this is an option on Bumble? Lifetime. I don't want to be on Bumble for a day. <laughs> why am I paying all this money to be on for a lifetime? That's a long time. I thought the whole point of dating apps was like to get off of them, to delete them. It's probably for a good price though. I've been having the same conversation over and over for the past five years. That's how I feel. I feel I've been having this conversation over and over and I'm getting so tired of it. I'm so tired. But anyways, let's talk about this Bumble situation. I am going to share my opinions about this. I'm basically going to reveal who the CEO or owner of this Bumble app is. Because I remember when Bumble came about, I was hearing people saying that, oh, it's an app owned by a woman for women. I'm like, okay, okay, I got it. But you know, I never got into Bumble because Bumble is not my thing, obviously. I am a married woman, but I've used Tinder in the past. And I think I used OkCupid back in the early 2000s. So I do have experience with online dating, but I have no reason to online date now and even if i was single i would never i would never get on them dating apps ever i would rather drag my coochie on the bare road than get on a dating app but i digress as you guys saw with those clips in the videos the ladies on tiktok are not happy with this new ad campaign these bumble billboards are unhinged i'm looking at one right now and you can tell it's a black woman, obviously. I'm, I'm going to get into that in a minute. And it says, you know full well if our celibacy is not the answer. So what's the answer? Get on Bumble. Get on Bumble. Participate in hookup culture. Get traumatized. Possibly essayed. Watch rinse repeat and start all over again. And keep getting traumatized. And then you're going to be one of those girls that get on the internet talking about men are dogs, men are trash, blah, 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 yada, yada. The women that are on the internet bashing the dating scene, bashing men, those women are traumatized. They absolutely are. And these dating apps are enabling hookup culture. Because when you look at the, when you really look at the term hookup culture, hookup culture is something that really started becoming popular back in the early 2000s. And what was different in the early 2000s to the 2010s compared to the 90s and the 80s? Exactly. Online dating became a thing. I remember back in as early as 2003, 2004, there were these dating sites for adults and it were basically dating sites or you can't even call it dating. But there were sites for adult, and I think the name of the, that site was Adult Friend Finder. Yes, that was the name of the, the, the site. And you would get on there only to hook up. That was it. Only to hook up. 
to fulfill whatever fantasy you wanted. If you wanted to have group sex, you can do that. If you are a couple and you wanted a threesome, you can get on there and do that. And those sites existed as early as 2003. So hookup culture and online dating goes hand in hand because hookup culture didn't become a thing until we had online dating. We moved away from the computers and we we now use apps and, you know, we are on our phones swiping to infinity. And this is very, very unhealthy. If you are listening to a dating coach that is telling you that you should get online, you should get on the dating apps, you should create a profile. If you're listening to someone that is going to give you the best bio for your profile and help you with your pictures and you know it's going to get you results and you're going to get better matches you're a fool you're a fool because that person is not going to help you that person is here to steal your time and your money if the dating coach or your mentor cares about your well-being and they want you to meet quality men they will not encourage you to online date and i know you ladies can't see it. You can't see where I'm coming from, but eventually you will because maybe you have to be traumatized a little bit more with these dating apps before you can really and truly understand and see where I'm coming from. Because right now I feel like I'm a mother that is trying to get through to a teenager and I'm struggling to get through to some of y'all. I give y'all the formula. I told you what, what to do. I told you to come and sign up to my Patreon. But no, y'all don't want to come and sign up to my Patreon. That's fine. You can watch my YouTube videos. You don't want to sign up to my Patreon. You don't want to invest in yourself. You don't want to do put in the work. But you okay paying these apps to be traumatized? You paying these dating apps to traumatize you. To be traumatized by fuckboys and losers and, and psychopaths and narcissists. Because that's all there is on these dating apps. That's all there is. A bunch of narcissists and psychopaths and their victims. A bunch of narcs and codependents. Those apps are rampant with these people. You are too valuable to be on these apps. I keep telling you all this. But anyways, um, these ad campaigns are crazy. And I like that women are waking up. Because honestly, it is better to be celibate and wait for the right guy than to be out here sleeping with a bunch of guys, wasting time on online dating. Like the time that you spend online dating and swiping could be spent doing something more productive. Could be spent doing something better. Could be spent reading a book. You could come to my book club. I mean, I can't do the work for you, but I can help you and I can guide you. I told you ladies, the best way to meet a man is through your network. And I told you, if you do not have a network or you don't have a good network, you need to work on it. You need to start networking. That's what I told y'all. But y'all are so lazy. Y'all just can't leave these apps alone. So who is the owner of Bumble? Her name is Whitney Wolfhood. Now, let's go look into this individual because when I went on her page, on her Wikipedia page, I just started laughing. I just started laughing because I, I just had a, you know what? Let me, let me show y'all. Let me show y'all. Now, you got to remember that Bumble is an app marketed to women and it's marketing in the, the same way that they market black owned businesses to black people. When they do that, they are triggering something in you emotionally because, because of what, who or what you identify with. It's the same thing that politicians do. So this is Whitney Wolf Hood. Whitney Wolf Hood. And by the way, when a woman has two last names, the first thing that comes to my mind is that this person came from money. That's the first thing that comes to my mind because most people, when they get married, most, most women, when they get married, they usually drop their, their surname and adopt their husband's last name. Usually when a woman keeps her original last name and also attaches her husband's last name to her name. It means that that name, her name, her original name, her maiden last name is important. Meaning that this is a name that is well-known, a name that has status, lineage, generational wealth, etc. I do not know if you all are aware of this, but this is what happens. And I know, I know there are, um, there might be, you know, middle-class or working-class people that, women that keep their original maiden name. I know that happens, but usually when I see this, Whitney Wolf, this is her last name and her, I already know. Cohen N, I already knew that this bitch come from money. Okay. So let's read Whitney's 
um, early life. And by the way, she's married. And you will never guess how she met her husband. You will never guess how she met her husband. <laughs> Anyways, Wolf Hurd was born as Whitney Wolf in Salt Lake City, Utah, to Kelly Wolf, who was Catholic, and Michael Wolf, a wealthy property developer who was Jewish. Wolf Hurd attended Judge Memorial Catholic High School. So she went to a, she didn't went to a regular high school. She went to a Catholic high school. When she was in sixth grade, the family went on a sabbatical in Paris, France. <laughs> okay. Now, the reason why I brought this up, to, I'm bringing this to your attention, is for the new people on here. And I want you all to open your eyes. Because I know you all hate the rich these days. You all are blocking the rich, eating the rich, canceling the rich. You all, you all hate the rich so much. But yet still, you all keep getting played. Like I keep telling you, you need to start making your own money. You need to start creating your own wealth. So you won't have to be, you know, you won't have to sit there being a, being a hater. And you won't have to be wasting your time on no damn dating app. You guys can pause to read the rest. Let's go down to see her personal life. Because this, these are the, like all this stuff, all of this is fluff. Okay. If you want to know about someone, come on here and read about their early life. Okay. Because that's tell, that gives you an idea of where they came from. Because these people love to come on here and pretend that they're self-made and pretend that they work so hard and they struggle and they got to where they are today because they work so hard. We all know working hard is not going to get you rich. We know that. So personal life. In December, oh, by the way, first, first of all, usually when you come on here and you go to a spouse, usually there's a link to so that you can go to the spouse and read about them. There's no link of her, sp her spouse, Michael Hood. Okay? So she's the founder and CEO of Bumble and co-founder of Tinder. Bumble and Tinder is the, is the same. It's not different. She's a founder and CEO of Bumble and co-founder of Tinder. This woman that have you all wasting your precious time and energy on the dating apps is married with two kids. And she's married to Michael Hood. And I'm like, damn it, why is there no link? I need to know who this guy is. So, of course, I scroll on here. Her personal life. In December 2013, she met oil and gas heir Michael Hood on an Aspen skiing trip, <laughs> not on Bumble, not on Tinder. She met oil and gas heir Michael Hood on an Aspen skiing trip. You bitches don't ski. They got married in 2017. They, of course, they're still married and the rest is history. But this is important. This sentence right here is the most important sentence that you need to read. I'm going to read it again for the dummies in the back. The slow ones in the back. In December 2013, she met oil and gas heir Michael Hood on an Aspen skiing trip. Now tell me, do you think this woman cares about finding you a match? Do you think this woman cares about the possibility of you getting married? Do you really think that this woman cares? Now, once you know who is behind the app, are you gonna still use that app? Are you gonna are you gonna keep using the app? That's what I'm gonna be asking you, ladies. Because honestly, I do not know how else to get through to you. To you ladies. I do not know how else to get you to, to y'all. I don't know. I really don't know. And it is so frustrating. I told y'all to go out there and network. Invest in your education. Invest in network. Start going on some damn skiing trip. Start making your own money. I mean, hell, start your own dating app. I don't care. Oh my God. And you know what? We all see those couples that met on Bumble. Like there's a couple on TikTok. Um... And it's always a black woman. They always use um, a minority, a person, a person of, you all know what I mean, an ethnic person. There's a couple on TikTok, beautiful couple. The lifestyle, oh my God, the lifestyle is decadent. And they both say that they met on a dating app. And women see that couple and they're like, oh my God, well, if she can find, if they can find each other on a dating app, then it can happen to us too. Please. You have no idea who these people are. You do not even, you don't even know if these people are being paid by these dating apps. These apps are so insidious. The, the developers of these apps are so insidious that they will literally be out here paying people, paying for news articles to print positive spin on these apps because they know these apps are fucking trash. They know they, they know the apps are trash. They know it's hot garbage. They're not stupid. She knows. Whitney Wolf heard. She knows. Okay, let me, let's go over here and talk. Why does Bumble slash Badu repeatedly block black women? <laughs> okay, this is what people are saying. This 
procedure is terrible. If Bumble is meant to be empowering women, why can't any disgruntled, unmatched man report a lady's page and she automatically gets blocked, even if she has been verified? This is what you all are putting up with. Now, does this song like an app that wants to make you happy and wants you to, to find your match and get married? Does it sound like this app has your best interest? Remember, the dating app's job is to find you a match, find you a wife or a husband. Or at least a girlfriend and a boyfriend. But women are getting a bad deal on this app. Women are being ghosted. Women are being abused, discarded, and traumatized. And then when you start acting like the men on this app, you get blocked. Even though you are also paying the app, you are a customer. They are quite happy taking your money and blocking you. Mm -hmm. That's what they are doing. Now tell me, is this what you all want? If women decide to have high standards, all it takes is for a Dusty to report her and boom, she's blocked after she spent all that money. If she decides to go on the app and charge, the men are complaining. They're like, oh no, we're paying you. Okay, because the app is your fucking pimp. Let's be real. We are paying you to supply us with free pussy. We are, I'm paying you this money to supply me with, with free pussy. Why are they charging me? Oh no, that's an escort. And boom, you're blocked. Now tell me again, is this what you all want? Is this what you like? Is this what you call dating? I mean, I don't know how to get through to you all anymore. Like I really don't. I mean, the goal of these apps, ladies, for you thick skull women that are listening right now, because you've been online dating for many years, how is it working for you? But anyways, you don't have to answer that question. You can think about it. The goal of these apps is to keep you on the app. They don't want you finding your soulmate. And I hear that term. They don't want you finding your soulmate and leaving the app and living happily ever after because it doesn't make financial sense to them. But going back to what I was talking about, these couples that are online, they pop up ever so often and they meet online. I suspect that these people are getting paid. Like these people are undercover influencers for these apps. You all need to start thinking. You all need, like you all need to start using your brain. You all really can't be that naive. You can't. You simply cannot be that naive. Who goes to Aspen to ski? Most of the times it's a bunch of rich people. And that is fine. I highly encourage you ladies still to um, get into skiing. Because if I live in the United States, I would definitely go out of my way to ski. I would love to go skiing, but you all know I live in the Caribbean. And I will go one day. It's going to happen, trust me. But I encourage you ladies to get hobbies. I always encourage you ladies to get hobbies that puts you in proximity with the wealthy. All right, so let's read about Bumble before I go. Let me share some information, okay? Because Bumble is a public trading company and Bumble has a shareholders bumble's only goal is profit start thinking ladies their only goal is profit in april 2019 wolf released the first print issue of bumble mag in partnership with hearst y'all can go look look this up in november 2019 bumble's parent company magic lab was sold to the private equity firm blackstone group Ooh. There we go. With co-founder Andre relinquishing his entire stake in both Bumble and sister company Badu. Wolf Hood became CEO of the newly acquired Magic Lab, valued at $3 billion, with an estimate 75 million users and received an ownership state of approximately 19% of the company. All right, so let's go and see who this Magic, Light, Magic Lab is. Let's go down this rabbit hole. Andrew Andrew is the, I guess, is the CEO of this Magic Lab or whatever. And he is a 50-year-old from Moscow, Russia. Early entrepreneurship. In 1992, after dropping out of a management course at the University of Moscow within a year of enrollment, Andrew moved to Valencia, Spain. He began startups and sold them for, for a profit. To such ventures, okay, you know what? Is there anything about his early life? He was born and raised in Moscow, Russia. Okay, this is another person that also came from money. Listen, these people are not self-made. I don't believe that there is such a thing as a self as as a self-made billionaire or whatever. But these people are not self-made. Okay, now listen. Andrew was born and raised in Moscow, Russia. In interviews, Andrew discussed an early interest in communication technology. He built a homemade radio as a preteen, and the first person he spoke to was from New York. 
In 2005, he moved to London, England, settling in Covent Garden. He became a British citizen in 2008. So it only took him three years to become a British citizen. Do you know how long it takes people to become a British citizen? Most people, it's not three years, okay? And he settled in Covent, Covent Garden. Covent Garden, Covent, I can't pronounce that word. Covent Garden is an upscale neighborhood in London. The hotel prices in Covent Garden is pricey. Andrew lists cooking as one of his greatest passion and contribute dishes to the menus of his favorite restaurants, the Sweet Onion Soup, which is um, a michelin star restaurant. I am not going to attempt to pronounce this, but it's a restaurant in Covent Garden in London. In 2018, Andrew made the Forbes Global List of Billionaires for the first time. So this is another billionaire. There's nothing about his parents in here, which is um interesting, okay? But he's known for Badu and Bumble. You, do you all think Andrew or Andrew, whatever, Andrew or whatever, you all think this guy care about you all? You all, th you all think this guy cares if you get a match? They care about your money. I mean, at least I care about your well-being. I can tell you that. But you all, you all stay supporting these people that don't give a shit about you. Make it make sense. I'm not going to read all this, but let's go down to Magic Lab because I want to know what Magic Lab is. So in 2019, Andrew launched Magic Lab, a holding company that builds and owns dating and social networking apps. Badu, Bumble, Lumen, Chappie, and Nut, and sorry, and Hot or Nut in partnership with their founders. They are making so much money from y'all. People are becoming billionaires. I need to, you know what? I need to start a dating app. Because y'all are not going to stop the using the dating apps. But I need to start one because, oh my God. Y'all are making these people so rich. Oh my God. So in February 2021, Bumble topped 13 billion in valuation after listing shares on the Nasdaq exchange. Her 18-month-old son was on her hip as she rang the Nasdaq bell. Oh, so wholesome. Ugh. In 2021, Wolf Hood became the youngest female billionaire after taking Bumble public. Of course, she became a billionaire because they know what do people care about most in their life. The three most important things to most human beings is money or livelihood or whatever you want to call it, health and relationship. Those are the three important things for human beings. These three areas a lot of people struggle with. People struggle with making money. People struggle with building wealth. So, of course, if people can promise you that they're going to get you wealthy, they're going to make money from you. People struggle with relationships. So if people tell you that they can get you that relationship, you can find the perfect partner, whatever, they are going to make money from you. And health. I don't even have to get into the health part because all you have to look at is the medical industry right now. Those three areas in your life are the most important areas in your life. Some people struggle in one area and strive in others. Some people are struggling in all three of these areas. And I believe that people that are on dating apps are struggling with all three because if you had money, you would be out there going to, on ski trips to Aspen to meet oil tycoons or whatever. If you were healthy, that also means mentally healthy, you would know that dating apps are not good for your health. And if you, were, if you had a healthy relationship, whether it be friendship or romantic partner, you wouldn't need to be on these apps. So I believe that people that are on these apps all the time, constantly, people that be on these apps for years, people that the only time the only time they will get a date is if they go on a dating app. You all are struggling in three of those areas. And that is not good. That is sad. That is really, really sad. So what you need to do, you need to invest your money elsewhere. Take, stop giving these apps your money because these apps used to be free for women. And the reason why they were free for us is because we were the product. They were basically selling us to men. Now they're charging, they're charging you. They're charging you so that you can have access to the same dusty, crusty, low-value men that you don't want. That's what they're doing. Delete the dating apps. Boycott the dating apps. Get your life back. Get your life under control. I help women get their life together. If you need a consultation or something like that, reach out to me on Instagram. The link is in the description. Come and join my Patreon. Come and get your life together because it's not looking good out here. Y'all are running around here looking crazy. Stop it. Thanks for listening.